limited by the material. <laughs> so I can't go off. However, last night, the Prime Minister had a burn supper at 10 Downing Street. And so she's all right for a shindig, despite everything that's going on. She can still, she can still partake of the burn. So that just shows you the popularity of the burn. She's not even Scottish. Well, if she is. <laughs> Here we are. Now, who's been to Burn Supper before? Yeah. I know. We're down here. Not many. So, you're in for this evening. We are going to speak to this haggis. <laughs> Why Robert Burns decided to write a poem to a haggis, I don't know. And I'm not going to ask. We'll try and find out. But we'll do this dispatch of the haggis. And just remember, for anybody who's a little bit nervous about the haggis, if you've eaten pork pie or frankfurter, it's much worse than what's in this. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Or the other thing is, old Scots have now got recognition as an actual language. I can remember my mother as a child would tell me off and give me a slap on the head for saying aye. But um, you younger people won't, uh, you won't understand that, but uh, put it around the ear. Anyway, here we go. Fair far your honest sonsy face. Great chieftain! What a good race. Up in the mall you tack your place. Edge. Right, up there. And where you want your grace, as long as my arm. The groaning trenches there you fill, your heart is like a distant hill. Your pen would help to mend a mill in time of need. While through your pores, the dew is still, I'd long be. <laughs> it's knife. See rustic labour death. <laughs> I'll cut you up as any sweat, trenching your gushing entrails bright like on a ditch. Oh! And then, the glorious set. One. Reeking. Then horn for horn, they'll stretch and strive. They'll take the hindmost on, they'll drive, till all their well swallowed guys believe. <laughs> and all good one makes my mind feel. Thank you, Hunt. Is there at all, Miss French Reed? Or all the old, so I assume. A fricassee would make a spew. Look down, we sneer in scornful view. On sick of dinner. Fair devil. See him all his trash. As feckless as a withered rash. His spindle shank, a good whip lash, is neither knit. Through bloody floods and fields to dash, oh, how unfit. But mark that rustic hang is fed, the trembling earth. The trembling earth! The trembling earth! We got there. His <laughs> hand is dread. And I've lost completely where we are now. <laughs> Chokes and luggies. But if you wish her grateful prayer, <laughs> here, a haggis!
stick of dinner on some poor body. Swift in some poor beggar's half it squattle. There you may creep and sprawl and sprattle. Be either kindred jumping cattle in shoals and nations. With horn or bay near there and settle your thick plantations. Now how do you there? Here ain't a sight. Under the fat rolls, snug and tight. Now fade you yet, you'll know me right, till you're on the very topmost of it. The very topmost towering height of Mrs. Bonnet. My sooth. <laughs> right, Bob, what's the sick you know then? As plump and grey as Oni Grosset, or for some rank mercurial rosset, or fell red smedum, a gee sick a hearty dose with, would dress your drodum. Don't worry, it is a Scottish compliment. <laughs> it's a great honour and a great privilege to deliver the toast to the lassies here at St. Jude's College of all places, because this is a great bastion of a place for the lassies. St. Jude started off as a lassies only <laughs> back in 1886 to provide opportunities in education not just for the lassies, but for the poorer lassies, the less well off in society. That being said, it is impossible to stand up here tonight at St. Hugh's College delivering the toast to the lassies and not mention Theresa May. <laughs> Theresa May. <laughs> of course, what our dear Piper 
Trevor failed to tell you earlier is that at Theresa May's Burns night last night, the haggis was sacrificed to Satan. 